Let's close with another look through the LAT archives, including several images from the hard drive never seen before. It's the Singapore Grand Prix this weekend, which means that Formula One is now on its final swing through Asia before crossing to North, Central and South America, and finally to Abu Dhabi. So let's say goodbye to the European tour with a look back at one of the greatest races ever staged at Monza. It took place in September 1967, 50 years ago, and carried the title Grand Prix of Europe. Jim Clark took the pole with his works Lotus 49 Cosworth after an eventful two days of practice in which he drove in the rain with this visor on his Buco helmet, unusual, tried both Goodyear's and Team Lotus's regular Firestone tires, and also bedded in the third works Lotus 49 hired out to the 61 French Grand Prix winner, Giancarlo Baghetti, a driver who remains the only man ever to win his first Grand Prix. It was, as ever, a big weekend for Ferrari. The Commendatore was present, and Mauro Foggeri, seen here on the left, engineered his V12 Ferrari for Chris Amon. The start was the usual shambles, as Dennis Jenkinson used to say, with four drivers, Jack Brabham in his own Brabham, on which he'd tested a familiar-looking full windscreen surround in practice, Dan Gurney in his Eagle V12, Bruce McLaren having only his second race in his BRM V12-powered McLaren M5A, and Graham Hill in the second works Lotus 49, all deciding to tear off into the lead when the flag dropped to release the cars from the dummy grid, not the grid proper. Jim Clark therefore dropped to the midfield in the melee, but soon slipstreamed his way to the front, passing Brabham in a beautiful move out of the Curva Grande, which in those days was a flat out right hander preceded only by the long pit straight. For the no chicanes at Monza back then, 1967, just straights and very fast corners. Clark seemed destined for an easy win until the handling balance changed and he began to lose his margin, typically. And as we would see all too sadly the following April at Hockenheim, Jim didn't make an instant decision to stop. He fought on, balancing the car with his amazing car control. It was only when Jack Brabham flicked inside him at the Parabolica, pointing as he did so to a deflating rear tire on the Lotus, that Jim decided that it was time to be worried. A similar incident had occurred in an F2 race at Rouen that year. Again, it was Brabham who had pointed to the puncture on Jim's Lotus 48. And on that occasion, Clark had raced on before eventually spinning right in front of Black Jack. Now, as he roared down the pit straight at Monza, flat out at 190 miles an hour with no seat belts, wearing an open face helmet and goggles, Jim looked over his shoulders to check the profile of his rear tires. Sure enough, he had a puncture. He stopped the following lap for the new Firestone. Pit work was leisurely in those days. He rejoined in 15th place, a lap behind the leaders. Many will say that he then drove the greatest race of his career, first to unlap himself and then to make up another entire lap on the field to retake the lead. The capacity Monza crowd on this hot, humid day was thunderstruck. Clark had achieved the impossible, although Jim himself would always rate the 62 German Grand Prix when he drove through the rain from the back of the field to finish fourth as perhaps the most demanding drive of his career. Surely nothing now could take the European and Italian Grand Prix win from Jim Clark, a win that would firmly keep him in the points for the 67 World Championship. As he began his last lap, however, Clark's Ford Cosworth engine began to cough and splutter and then eventually to die. He coasted across the line, out of fuel, to finish only third. He'd lost the win and he had lost any chance of winning the 67 title. And he'd done so because of something as innocuous as an empty fuel tank. He'd used more fuel than planned in his drive through the field, that was clear. Much later, the Lotus mechanics also realized that foam baffles inserted in the fuel tanks to prevent surge on the fast corners had also absorbed some of the fuel. Jim had started with what Colin Chapman considered to be a safe minimum fuel load. In reality, the car could have carried more. In reality, the margins were too tight. Victory, a stunning victory, went to John Surtees, who outfumbled Brabham on the oil into the parabolica to nose ahead at the finish line. The crowd surged onto the straight in front of the grandstands, mobbing Surtees and also mobbing Clark, who walked up towards the Lotus Pit with Bernard Caillé, a look of desolation defining his features. There was no podium at Monza. While John celebrated, Jim quietly packed his Leston track bag, climbed into his Lotus Elan and headed back to the Hotel de Ville for some sort of late team dinner. The win was lost, but history would relate that Clark's had been an F1 drive that would forever span the decades.